So fiber broadband or fiber is really the most efficient and the greenest way to deliver massive amounts of data to a massive number of people. So connectivity is really key to a green society. Connectivity is what allows us to take meetings from home. It takes cars off the road. It's what allows us to do remote workshops, meaning less people in the air. It allows us to do smart metering so we can reduce energy consumption. And it can reduce the carbon footprint of ev almost every other industry. As we say in Nokia, there is no green without digital. When we look at fiber broadband, the fiber itself is actually extremely efficient at transmitting data. The medium is durable and the networks can be built in a sustainable way. If you think about it, you're essentially shining a light, a laser light, down in optical fiber, which is the width of a human hair. So you're basically sending energy down a very narrow channel. If you compare that with other transmission media, radio for example, there you are transmitting energy across a big part of the sky. That's a lot less efficient. We've come an extremely long way in, in, the, in the access industry. If you think 20 years ago, ADSL was the was the hottest technology around. You could do a couple of megabits per second. Today, we can do hundreds of gigabits per second over an optical fiber. And it's going to continue. When fiber was first introduced, the first mass technology was a gigabit per second. Now we're at 10 gigabits per second. We already have 25 gigabits per second available. We're working on 50 gig. We've already shown that you can do 100 gig. That's really a fantastic achievement for any industry. Fiber is also incredibly durable. It's basically made out of glass. It's an optical fiber, so it doesn't corrode, which means it's going to last for generations. First fiber was manufactured more than 60 years ago. They're still going strong. What that means is that, yes, you need to spend time and effort to install that fiber plant in every street and every building, but once it's there, we're good for decades. And the real beauty is that you don't have to replace the optical fiber if you want to increase the speed. You just change the endpoints, you replace them with newer technology, but you keep the fiber in place. That's the real beauty of this infrastructure. There's also an inherent sustainability to the way we build these fiber access networks today. The most widely used technology today is called a passive optical network, which basically means that there's no active equipment, as the name implies, in the network itself. There's just active equipment on both sides. Furthermore, each fiber can connect multiple endpoints, users, homes, businesses, smart city infrastructure, anything. What that means is that you only need a single connecting port in the central office to connect an entire street rather than one port per end user. That means you need less equipment in the central office. That means you're going to have lower power consumption. It means you need less cooling equipment, which means you're going to have less power consumption for the cooling. So there's enormous benefit to this passive optical network technology that everyone is, is, uh, is using today. The fact that, that networks can have such a huge impact on the carbon footprint of other industries doesn't mean that we shouldn't do everything we can to reduce our own carbon footprint and our own power consumption. We focus on four other aspects as well. First of all, we keep increasing the speeds. That's not only good for the subscriber, but as we increase the speeds, it actually increases faster than the power required to transmit at those speeds. Effectively, that means that your power consumption per bit is going down. Second, we also design our products and our chipsets to be power efficient. And we focus on performance on one hand, but we also put a lot of design emphasis on power efficiency. Third, we also focus on designing products for recyclability. And we make sure that products can be easily assembled, but also disassembled, which means that you can separate the white plastic from the black plastic, from the electronics, they can all be separated separately. So of our newer products, 70 to 80% of the components can be easily recycled that way. And finally, we also focus on packaging. We are shifting to 100% paper and cardboard based packaging, it can be fully recycled, but we also figured out that we can offer the same level of protection in a smaller volume with a smaller box, which basically means that we can ship more products in the same container. There's also a growing realization in the industry that these fiber to the home networks that were originally built to connect homes, to provide residential broadband services, that they now have so much capacity that they can also be used for other purposes. In the end, it's a fiber infrastructure that passes every home and every building. Obviously, that's a lot more energy efficient. And similarly, you can actually open up that network to other service providers. So rather than having multiple operators each building their own network, you can have one operator build a network, open it up, create virtual networks on top of it, and other operators can then use one of those virtual networks to deliver their services to the end user. So rarely is the fastest of anything also the greenest, but in this case it's actually true. Fiber is by far the most energy efficient way to deliver broadband. It'll last for generations and you can keep increasing the speed.